Relationship Attribute Mappings Relationship Mapping Overview Relationship mapping is designed to facilitate data entry on CRM forms. It allows data field values to be copied or mapped when a related record is created from within the form of a primary entity. Mappings are actually defined in the relationship itself and apply to that relationship only at the time of a create of a new record. Data is copied from the database, not the form. So unsaved data on the form will not be what's copied to the new record that's being created. Subsequent updates to the primary record will not be applied to the related record after the initial copy of data fields. And mapping does not affect workflows or SDK created records. So let's talk about a relationship mapping example. When we create a new contact from within the account form, specific contact fields are populated with data in that account record, such as address and phone number. Or when we create a new quote from within the opportunity form, opportunity information is copied into the new quote and opportunity products are copied as quote products. Mapping for the opportunity products to quote products is also customizable, but it requires a few tricks to get there. Relationship mapping details. The target attribute can only be mapped once in a relationship. This is because subsequent mappings would just overwrite the data. You cannot concatenate two fields. It's a very simple process. On the other hand, the source fields can be mapped multiple times to different target fields. You also can't map to or from disabled fields. The target attribute must be the same data type as the source attribute. The target must also be the same length or longer than the source attribute. And when you create a relationship the target lookup attribute for a relationship is automatically mapped for you. So let's take a look at actually creating a relationship map. So we're now looking at a relationship between account and case. This is actually the customer relationship. So I'm going to drill down on mappings and show you out of the box that basically there is one mapping that's already created. And this means that whenever I create a new case record from within an account record, it will automatically populate the account ID. So in this particular case, I want to go ahead and create a new mapping. So I click on New. And this now shows me a choice of all the fields that I can use on source and target size. So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to map something to the responsible contact. And what I want to do is I want to default that to the primary contact from within the account record. So I have now selected my source entry field as primary contact ID and my target entity field as responsible contact. Now, it's important to recognize that in the case of a lookup field, I can only map for the same type of lookup field to another. So in effect, if I have a lookup field which is an account lookup in the source and it is also an account lookup in the target, then I could map that. But I could not map an account lookup field to a contact lookup field or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and select OK. And it has now created my mapping. And so this now means that from now on, whenever I create a new account from within a case, it will automatically populate the responsible contact in the case from the primary contact of the account. So we'll go ahead and save. Now the next thing I'd like to do is to go create another mapping. Or at least I want to go to the form and show you something that's changed. If you'll notice at this point, the responsible contact is no longer available in the list. And this is because you can only map to a field once. 
Once I have mapped to the field, it's removed from the list of fields that I can map. The other thing that you want to be aware of is there is a functionality available in CRM to generate the mappings automatically. This can be problematic because it can create a number of things that you may not wish to keep. So we'll go ahead and generate mappings. Now, it will also wipe out my primary contact ID that I've created and replace it with whatever ones that it determines it should generate. It gives me a confirmation to make sure that I really want to do that because it will override my existing mapping and I tell it OK. And we now have created a number of mappings that I perhaps don't want to have. Now, I did want currency to go in there, but I don't know that I want the owner to change and a number of other things like that. So, I tend not to use the automatic mappings, but if you are careful in generating your entities, you might find it a very powerful tool. Mapping Option Sets It's important to understand that mapping copies the data value of an attribute from within the record. Option Sets store the selected option's numeric value in the record, not the text value. So this means that if you're using different option sets between entities that you're trying to do mapping between, that these must match to map correctly. They must be kept in sync for mapping to work. Now it's a best practice to use a shared option set where possible because you won't have to worry about maintaining a synchronicity between two option sets that way. However, this is not possible in the case of out-of-box entities because there's a number of option sets that are replicated in both the lead and the account and the contact that need to be maintained. So let me give you an example of where we could run into problems. Improper option set mappings. If the source entity has an option set that has four values, with value 1 being cold, value 2 being warm, 3 hot, and 4 immediate. But the target entity has 1 equal to cold, 2 equal to hot, and 3 equal to warm, and no value for 4, you'll have issues. Now notice, if the record that you're mapping happens to have cold in it, it will map correctly. However, if warm or hot is in the source record, then they'll be transposed into the target record. And finally, if you have a 4 in your source record, then that means that you'll have an error condition due to invalid data because 4 is not even defined in the option set of the target entity. So this should make it clear that you must make sure that the options and the values match and that you have all of the same options in the target that you could possibly have in the source. Now the caveat is the target could have more values in it that are not in the source entity, but that would not cause a problem for mapping. Now lookup attributes can be mapped as well, and they can be mapped like other attribute types. They contain a GUID to a specific entity record, so you can only map to a lookup field of the same entity type. So a correct mapping would be source account lookup to target account lookup or source case lookup to target account lookup would not be valid. When you're mapping date and time attributes, they can also be mapped like other attribute types. Now it's important to recognize that they're stored as date and time in the database regardless of the option to display date only on the forms. So the mapping will take place regardless of the options in the source or the target because the underlying data is the same. And as we showed in our example, using the automatic mapping feature will destroy existing mappings. It will map everything it can match. It generally will create mappings you will not want, but you can go back and delete these. And it may miss some mappings unless the names and types match exactly between the two entities that you're trying to do the mapping between. Now for some resources. The SDK can be found at this link. We highly recommend these books working with CRM 2011 on Microsoft Press and the Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2011 Administrative Bible on Wiley. You can also do well to go to the CRM team blog 
and the CRM forums. I want to thank you for your time, and I hope you have found this segment helpful. I'm Steve No. Have a wonderful day.